But I thought that if, I thought once, and that's me, that if Cyril came out as a bold reformer who did what he knows has to be done to get economic growth going, to stop corruption, to do all of those things, mm -hmm. to get rid of cadre deployment, all of those things, if he was bold and did that, I thought there was potential. I don't think so anymore. Has uh, Ramaphosa done a decent job no. of running this country? No. <laughs> you know, this is the only question that people need to ask themselves, especially the ANC supporters. This is the only question that they need to ask themselves before they go out and vote for Ramaphosa to be the president of the country again. I mean, guys, can you imagine how South Africa is going to be like if Ramaphosa wins a second term? Can you imagine how bad things are going to be in the country if Ramaphosa actually becomes the president of the country again? You know, with Ramaphosa, we didn't need two terms. With Ramaphosa, we don't need two terms. We don't need a lot of time. We can see right now, his first term as the president of the country has already demonstrated the kind of leader he is. I mean, for the longest time, the people of this country said that, Ramaphosa, we are sick and tired of you because you cannot even make decisions. You are a very indecisive president. And the people of this country do not like indecisive people. I mean, looking at where the country is today and the fact that people's lives are being destroyed each and every day, South Africans do not need someone who is indecisive to be the president of the country. But it looks like Ramaphosa was everything that the South Africans did not want in a president. And this is the reason why I'm saying that to all of the people that are going to vote for Ramaphosa to be the president of the country again, you look at his term, you look at the damage that has been done to the country. Do you think that Ramaphosa deserves another term to be the president of the country? I know Ramaphosa is arrogant. I know that a lot of people that are actually have been the president of the country, they are actually arrogant. Someone will not come out and say that, I think I have done enough damage. Even Jacob Zuma did not come out and say that, I think I've done enough damage in the country. Maybe it's time for me to go. Jacob Zuma stood and he went for the second term. The African National Congress continued to defend him up until they could not defend him anymore. It looks like Ramaphosa wants to do the same thing. Ramaphosa can see right now that the African National Congress still wants to defend him. The African National Congress still want to run with him because within the African National Congress, there is no one actually who can actually win a presidency for that part. There is no one that the African National Congress at this point, they can parade and say, guys, this is our new president and we want the people of this country to vote for this new president. I think right now they still want Ramaphosa to be the president of the country because for some reason they still believe that the majority of the people in the country, they still love Ramaphosa despite how they feel about Ramaphosa, but they would rather vote for Ramaphosa instead of voting for other political figures in the country. So this is why Ramaphosa is going to run for the second term. But I don't think there's been any president who has actually said that, guys, I know I have been the president of the country for the past five years, but looking at my record, looking at the fact that when I became the president, everything got worse. I think I have done enough, I have, I think I have done enough, enough damage in the country. So I think it's my time to sit down. I don't think Ramaphosa is the type of person to do that. And I don't think Ramaphosa wants to be known as a one term of president. You know, the president, they have this thing of theirs. People, they don't want to be the one term president. Man, you, if someone comes and be the president for one term, he knows that he, his name is going to be in the history books. So people try to go for the second, for the second term. You only have to look at his record, man. When it comes to Ramaphosa, it, like it is so easy. You just have to look at his record and say that, man, looking at your record, we, don't, we honestly don't believe that you deserve another second term. You don't deserve another term as the president of the country. So many things are going wrong, man. There is no accountability, not, none whatsoever. For all the people that have done horrible things in the country, you came, into the, you came as the president of the country and you said that 
one of the first things that you're gonna do you're gonna make sure that you strengthen the npa so that they can go after all of these corrupt inf individuals the state capture commission when people were exposed live on national television but some of those characters that have been exposed on live national television they are working with you as the president you are talking about a step aside but the people that have been named and shamed in zondo commission they are still working with you many of those they are still working with you you remember Lindu, you remember that woman the secretary the, the deputy secretary general of the african national congress the, so, the same woman who said that if the rent falls will pick it up the same woman who went to national television and told south africans that 30 years it is not enough you remember like these are these are type of people that are working with ramaphosa today this is despite ramaphosa promising the people of this country while parading shamila batoi you remember ramaphosa paraded shamila batoi and told the people of this country that guys now we have shamila batoi this woman is going to make sure that the people are held accountable this is these are the promises of ramaphosa and i think these are the things that actually made people fall with ramaphosa because people were sick and tired of jacob zuma and the guptas and all the corruption that was happening under jacob Zoom. so when ramaphosa came out and said that guys it's time for us to clean i think this is the reason why many people actually gravitated towards ramaphosa but ramaphosa became the president and it looks like things got worse things actually got worse when he became the president of the country and i think this is the reason why people are so angry at ramaphosa they are more angry at ramaphosa than they were with jacob zuma i don't think actually south africans expected a lot from jacob zuma they did not expect a lot from jacob zuma but Ramaphosa, people expected a lot from him. And this is the reason why they are so mad at Ramaphosa when they see things are not working in the country. And this is why people are so mad at Ramaphosa. They look at Ramaphosa and they say, man. <laughs> they say, man. We thought that you're going to clean up the country. Man. You said you're going to clean up the country. You promised the people heaven on earth. Many people actually expected you to be this president that was going to clean up our president. Many people actually thought that Ramaphosa was going to bring South Africa to that standard of Tabumbik. That's what people thought about Ramaphosa. You remember even when Ramaphosa became the president, the African National Congress actually paraded Ramaphosa as this business person who, la who has his own money. So he won't actually care about the money of the country because this man actually has his own money they paraded him as the businessman who is actually gonna be able to convince the investors to come into the country but today you look at everything man you look at the fact that companies are leaving south africa you look at the fact that the thousands and thousands of people they are losing their jobs even the people who are starting their own businesses 60 percent of young people that are starting their own businesses they end up in debt that because their businesses end up failing because of load shading right now load shading is causing people's jobs is destroying people's lives and all of these things are happening so much under ramaphosa they're happening so much under ramaphosa so i think looking at ramaphosa and his presidency man it, it is understandable why people are actually so mad at the president they are so mad at the president the people like with jacob zuma like i said like people did not expect much from jacob zuma People didn't expect much from Jacob Zuma, but with the Ramaphosa, I mean, people actually expected Ramaphosa to be that kind of a president. People actually expected South Africa to be there on top with Ramaphosa as the president of the country. But now, ah, it looks like South Africans actually miscalculated with Ramaphosa. They miscalculated with Ramaphosa. I mean, things are so bad with Cyril right now that he's not even running with the achievements of his presidency in the past five years. Ramaphosa today he's running around telling South Africans about what the African National Congress has done since since 1994. Ramaphosa is not telling South Africans about what the African National Congress has done ever since he became the president. And I think that alone actually shows you that even Ramaphosa understands that I mean we I don't have wins as the president of the country. I don't have achievements that I can go around and boast about. I don't have achievements as the president of the country. So for me to actually try to salvage my reputation and for me to try to win the second term, I might as well tell South Africans that, guys, let's look at what the African National Congress has done since, since 1994. Please do not look at my presidency. Please do not look at the past five years of my presidency. No, do not look at that. Just remember that many people, you know, many people back then, they did not have water and electricity. Remember that many people back then were oppressed. Remember everything about apartheid and remember what the African National Congress has done. 
African National Congress has built you RDP houses. Now you have water and electricity. Because of African National Congress governance right now, you are getting the social cancer. This is the reason why, again, the president is going around telling people that, guys, if you don't vote for ANC, chances are you're going to lose your social cancer. I mean, like, these are the things that Ramaphosa was never supposed to run on. Ramaphosa was never supposed to run on. I mean, like, Ramaphosa was supposed to have improved our economy so much. People were supposed to be getting jobs left, right, and center. The only thing that he had to say was that, guys, you vote for me again, then I'm going to double what I've done for the people of this country. He was never supposed to campaign using the social accounts. He was never supposed to blackmail South Africans and telling them that, guys, if you don't vote for us, you're going you, you're gonna to lose the social accounts. Ramaphosa was supposed to, to come out and say, guys, ever since I became the president of the country, guys, the investment came into the country the businesses were actually opened into the country the corrupt officials are thrown to jail and people are having jobs today people are are living a healthy lifestyle i mean crime is down in the country and if you vote for me i promise to double what i have done this is what many people actually expected Ramaphosa to actually do. And this is where we, 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 we thought that when we, we, we got to this position, especially in 2024, these are kind of ways we would actually hear from Ramaphosa because Ramaphosa has actually done so much for the country. But no, Ramaphosa didn't do anything for the country. And today he campaigns telling people that guys you have to vote for us or, or and remember what the african national congress has done since 1994 if people don't vote for us they're going to lose their social accounts I and mean, all of these things that ramaphosa is talking about when he was never supposed to be talking to be talking about he was never supposed to be talking about so to answer the question of, of david mashabela he has done uh, he has done a terrible job man as the president of the country he has done a terrible job as the president of the country. Man. I, I think many people are disappointed in Ramaphosa because they expected so much from him. After having nine years of Jacob Zoom, people actually expected so much from Ramaphosa. People didn't think that there was going to be a worse president than Jacob Zuma in the country. We, we never thought we could actually have a worse president than Jacob Zuma in the country. I mean, like Ramaphosa's presidency is making Jacob Zuma's presidency look like kindergarten. Ramaphosa, he spoke about the small governance, man. He spoke about the small cabinet. He spoke about small cabinet. He spoke about dreaming the salaries of the of, of the members of cabinet. These are the things that could have actually won the people over to the African National Congress. Can you just sit back and imagine if everything that Ramaphosa spoke about when he became the president of the, of the country, if they have just implemented 60% of those things that they were talking about, many people right now, they will be drawn towards the African National Congress. They will be drawn towards the African National Congress. I mean, you think about it, the fact that today in South Africa, we, we have a lot of political parties. We have all of these political parties simply because the African National Congress has done a terrible job governing the country. If the African National Congress has actually done a good job governing the country, there would be no need for us to have all of these political parties that we are having in the country today. There would be no need. There would be no need. But because today in South Africa, we, we find ourselves having over 350 political parties, all because of the African National Congress. I can tell you today, like many people still want to vote for the African National Congress people, a lot of people in the country, man, they, they, like, they still do not trust these political parties, especially the new political parties. Many people don't trust the new political parties. Many people do not trust the new political parties. I remember even when Helen Zilla was the president or, or was the leader actually of the DA, many people actually gravitated towards the DA because you remember at some time the DA was an alternative of the African National Congress. But I don't know what happened because many people are drawing back right now from the Democratic Alliance. Many people are actually distancing themselves from the Democratic Alliance. But when Helen Zilla was still the leader of the Democratic Alliance, actually like Helen Zilla was one of those controversial figures, man. but actually people gravitated towards her. People gravitated towards her. I thought that <laughs> in South Africa, I mean, we, would, we would actually have two political parties, the ANC and the DA. But you look at our political landscape today, the fact that we have over 350 political parties. Every Tom, Dick and Harry goes around telling South Africans and convincing South Africans that, guys, I'm the perfect, I'm the perfect guy for you. I'm the perfect guy for you. I can govern better. Even the people who have never governed a, 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 a municipality, the people who have never governed <laughs> nothing, a ward, they are asking you for your vote. So that they can be the leaders of this country. So I think, man, Ramaphosa and the African National Congress, man, these people, they really need to look. It's hot, guys. Yo, it's hot. 30 degrees. It's so hot. 
Ramaphosa and African National Congressmen, they were supposed to look at and reflect and look at African National Congress and look at the fact that, man, you know, for the past 25 years, the African National Congress has basically been destroy destroying the country. That's why I say, man, I don't know, for some reason, people actually thought that Ramaphosa was going to be the one who was going to fix the mess of the African National Congress. This is why people went so nuts when Ramaphosa was introduced. It's hot, man. People went nuts when Ramaphosa was introduced as the presidential candidate of the NC. People actually went nuts because for some reason, I man, for some reason, South Africans had hope that Ramaphosa was going to fix the mess of Jacob Zoom. But you look at where the country is today. The African National Congress and their corruption and their incompetence, like, they, like they, they've put South Africa to a point where now we have 350 political parties. We're going to have three ballots in these elections. All of these things that are happening because of the African National Congress. Put you on the top of the ladder. You have to get up there yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has uh, Ramaphosa done a decent job? No. Of running this country? No. Uh, he should have been a bold reformer who did what was necessary. Instead, he was absolutely timid, he's conflict averse, and he put the ANC above the country. You speak of him in the past. Yes, he is in the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is in the past, I'm afraid. Well, do you agree with Helen Zilla, guys? Do you think that Ramaphosa is not going to be the president of the country again? Because Helen Zeller keeps referring to Ramaphosa in the past. He was supposed to be this reformer. <laughs> Do you agree with Helen Zeller? Do you actually think that Ramaphosa is not going to be the president of the country again? Why so clear that he's in the past? He's likely to win. There are only three <clears throat> possibilities of presidents in our country. It's either going to come from the DA, the EFF, or the ANC. Or, since we have that little problem of threshold, it might come from another small party. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you, you speak of him, he's likely to still be president. So, what do you say to a, to a Cyril Ramaphosa presidency again uh, in South Africa? And what, is it, what is it likely to achieve, in your, in your opinion, from what it has done so far? I don't think it's going to achieve anything. That's the point. I mean, we all, all came with such high hopes in 2019. So, you also had hopes? We all had hopes. Everyone had hope, man. Everyone had hope. Everyone. All of us, we had hope. <laughs> Even you, David Mashabela, man. Please be honest, man. You know you had a bit of hope when Ramaphosa became the president. Everyone had hope that things were going to be better in the country. It, like, these people who keep saying that, now nah, we knew that Ramaphosa was going to be a terrible president. They are simply saying that because Ramaphosa's presidency is a mess. And right now, they cannot come out and say that, man, for some reason, I, I kind of said that there's going to, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite hopeful about this guy called Ramaphosa. Even his enemies today, they, like, they were actually hopeful about his presidency. They were hopeful about his presidency. When you remember even Julius Malema when Ramaphosa, first, the, 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 the first day of Ramaphosa in parliament, you remember Julius Malema, man. Julius Malema, like, man, like, was only left with kissing Ramaphosa on the feet. He was worshipping Ramaphosa that day. But today, today, man, when Julius Malema speaks about Ramaphosa, you would not think that this is the same Julius Malema that was like that was giving Ramaphosa all the praise when the man became the president of the country. <laughs> I thought the best way of supporting Sir Ramaphosa's potential was to back the DA because then he would realize that um, he wouldn't be beholden to the EFF. Mm that he would have a much stronger partner in the DA eventually. But I've given up that idea. I've given up that idea entirely because he's completely failed as a reformer. The thing is that with Ramaphosa, Ramaphosa, it's like, <laughs> no, not even Ramaphosa, the African National Congress, they know that the DA is probably the best political party to work with in the country, but they know that the DA wants to punish the African National Congress. <laughs> they know that the DA wants to punish the African National Congress. I think this is what the African National Congress actually is scared about, especially when it comes to working with the Democratic Alliance, because they know that, man, these people, these people are going to punish us so hard. If we can open a door, a bit of door, for these people to come in, they're going to punish us. They're going to punish us. Now they are left with the, with the EFF. 
Can you imagine the presidency of the ANC and the EFF? <laughs> presidency of the ANC and the EFF. People will not hold each other accountable there. You're saying you've given up on it. So the idea of partnering with the ANC has always has always been there within the deal. No, no, it has not. It has definitely not. Okay. That has not been there. Mm -hmm. But I thought that if I thought once, and that's me, that if Cyril came out as a bold reformer who did what he knows has to be done to get economic growth going, to stop corruption, to do all of those things, mm -hmm. to get rid of cadre deployment, all of those things, if he was bold and did that, I thought there was potential. I don't think so anymore. Not mm -hmm. at all. So you will never, never be in a coalition with the ANC? Well, I don't see them as coalition partners. They'll destroy the DA. If the conversation ever comes up? Because it's really just a phone call. Well, you know, no, it's not a phone call. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> you remember even Gideon McKenzie? Gideon McKenzie, for the longest time, he actually accused Helen Zele of speaking with the African National Congress behind everybody's back. You know that right now the Munipec and their partners, they are saying that there is no way they're going to work with the African National Congress. There is no way the, the, the Munipec partners are going to work with the African National Congress. But Gaten McKenzie actually came out and actually accused Helen Zele of having conversations with the African National Congress behind everybody's back. So I don't know, man, if you are a DA supporter, do you think that the DA would actually reject the offer of governing with the African National Congress. Be honest, if you are a DA supporter, do you think that if the African National Congress says that, man, the Democratic Alliance, man, we don't want to govern with these people, we think you are a better suited partner for us to govern with you, do you think the Democratic Alliance is going to look away? Do you think the DA is going to be like, ah, you guys have destroyed the country and you guys, <laughs> you're going to destroy us too? So, no, we are not going to go into coalition with you. Do you think that is the response that the DA is going to give to the African National Congress? Because, guys, me personally, I said that political parties, man, I know that right now people are making bold statements. Many people are going around saying that I'm never going to work with the African National Congress. We will never. We want nothing to do with the Democratic Alliance, man. The Democratic Alliance is a racist party. We want nothing to do with them. But after the elections, I know that everybody is going to be negotiating with everybody. Everybody's going to be negotiating with everybody. So that is a very good question, man, from David Mashabel. I'm sorry for interrupting the... Well, I don't see them as coalition partners. They'll destroy the DA. If the conversation ever comes up? Because it's really just a phone call. Well, you know, no, it's not a phone call. <laughs> That's the problem. It's not a phone call. And it's not bargaining around positions. Mm -hmm. Coalitions are very complex things that require very complex agreements. So you're saying, you, as a DA, you wouldn't pick up that call? That's not my call. I'm not the leader of the party. Well, my job is to keep the red. Ah, Helen, come on, Helen, Helen, come on. Give us something, man. <laughs> Give us something, man. Give us something. Give us something. Because the DA is one party that has already said it outside of that, man. We're not going to work with the National Congress and we want nothing to do with the EFF. You remember for the longest time, people actually accused the DA of pushing the African National Congress towards the EFF because if the DA is going to come out and say that they do not want to work with the African National Congress and they want nothing to do with the EFF. So the African National Congress might as well say, man, these people that maybe we have a better chance of providing the people of this country with a better service, they want nothing to do with us. So we might as well go to the EFF because the, EF, because the DA, for the longest time, they've gone around and said that we don't want to work with the African National Congress and we are not going to work with the EFF. So I think that statement from the DA actually pushed the African National Congress towards the EFF. It pushed the African National Congress towards the EFF. <sighs> Complex agreements. So you're saying you, as a DA you wouldn't pick up that call? That's not my call. I'm not the leader of the party. Well, my job is to keep <laughs> the rest of the party running so that the leaders can make the call. Would you pick up the call? Well, my personal take is that it might once have been a prospect when Cyril Ramaphosa posed as a great reformer. Okay. That's five but, years ago. Yeah. But the interim in the last five years have shown me absolutely not. The ANC is endemically corrupt. They're only involved and focused on staying in power 
to keep their fingers on the purse strings and they don't have any inherent capacity for reform. Mm. Well, what are your thoughts, guys, on that, man? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Because people can say that, okay, fine, this is how the DA feels about the African National Congress, but isn't the, African, isn't the Democratic Alliance the only party that can actually put the ANC to line? Because if the if the ANC goes into coalition with everybody but be, be, but, be, but the Democratic Alliance, corruption is still going to continue and the people's lives are going to be destroyed. What are your thoughts on that? Because I think that as much as the African National Congress is so corrupt, they don't need another corrupt partner. If the Afghan National Congress do not win the elections with out, out, out majority, I don't think they need another corrupt partner. I think they need people like the DA, people who are actually gonna, who are gonna say, guys, you, you, have, you have been doing your thing for, for, for such a long time, but not anymore. But not anymore. Right now, we're gonna protect the citizens of this country because if the DA is gonna go out and give up on the idea of governing with the Afghan National Congress, it means that they're gonna step on the side while the African National Congress maybe picks the EFF and destroys the people's lives. So I think that the fight has to be taken so that they can fight from within. They can fight from within. I mean, like, this is the only way they can actually help and save people's lives. You know, the DA, they are running with the Save South Africa. You've seen their posters, Pulosa South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> but if the DA actually wants to, 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 to have a huge contribution to the people's lives in this country, they're going to have to go into coalition with Afghan National Congressmen, irregardless of how corrupt the ANC is, because the DA right now it is the only party that can actually stand between the Afghan National Congress and destroying this country. There are other political parties in the country, they are not going to stand in the way when the Afghan National Congress destroys the country. Patriotic Alliance is not going to stand in the way of Afghan National Congress destroying the country. The EFF is not going to stand in the way of Afghan National Congress destroying the country. But right now, the only political party that is big enough that can actually stand in the way of Afghan National Congress destroying the country is the Democratic Alliance. So the option of going with the ANC to the coalition, it, it has to be there. It has to be there. The DA has to, has to put it into consideration that, guys, we know that it, it is not an idea. But right now, we are fighting for the people of this country because we cannot allow these political parties to go into coalition with the ANC. We cannot allow that situation. We have to talk with Ramaphosa. We have to speak with the top brass of the African National Congress. We have to make some concessions. But there is no way we're going to allow the African National Congress to go into coalition with other political parties because the African National Congress going into coalition with other political parties is the same as the African National Congress winning in the majority because those political parties are simply going to cower to the ANC. They're simply going to cower to the ANC. What is, what is the one thing that has disappointed you the most about him as president? His lack of courage. I know Saul not well, but I do know him. And I did work in an extended cabinet with him for a while. Let me say that I think he's basically a good man. But... The one critical ingredient you have to have in politics is courage. Mm. And I don't think he's got that. And that's, that's the one, that's a deal breaker. For it's a deal sense. breaker. Yeah. It's a deal breaker. I mean, to fix South Africa, you're going to have to have so much courage. You've got to have a backbone of steel. And he doesn't have it. Is there anyone within the ANC that has it? Well, I don't know everybody within the ANC, but anybody in the top positions, absolutely not. I mean, you know. The top seven now. No, yeah. No. <sighs> Coalition with the ANC, but rather with EFF. There was cooperation in the city of Tuan a few years ago. I was dead opposed to that. Dead opposed to really? that. Really? Very. However, I mean, that caused you, my first you, polarization with Musi and others. It gave you Mayam Sima. That was that time <laughs> when Mayam Sima became mayor. I know. but You, you, you say you were dead opposed to it. But I yet, was dead opposed to a cooperation agreement with the EFF. Dead opposed to it. Why, why were you opposed to it? Because we believe in completely different things. 
Our job is to oppose the EFF. Mm. Ultimately, South Africa is going to come down to a contestation between what the DA believes mm. and what the EFF believes. Mm. The ANC mm. doesn't know what it believes. It's all over the place. <laughs> the EFF knows what it believes, mm. and the DA knows what it believes. The DA believes in constitutionalism, the rule of law, non-racialism, a social market economy, and progress for all. That's what the DA believes in. Are you saying if I was to put a Sir Ramaphosa on that chair, he will have different opinions to those beliefs? I don't care what his opinions are. I want to see what he does. Yeah. It's very easy to say things, but can you do things? Can you? Become the government, let's say, of a city or a province or a country and do the things that are necessary to get progress. Mm. That's what's important. And to do those things, you need a lot of courage because there's a million people pulling you down all the time. And people in the media who don't know what they're talking about gabbling on all the time. And the issue of courage, man, the issue of courage. Do you think that... Okay, let's say you become the president of the country, whoever is watching the platform right now, let's say you become the president of the, of, of, of the African National Congress and you want to, 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 to have courage, um, you want to, to, to be a reformer, just like Helen Zell is saying that Ramaphosa was supposed to be this reformer. Do you think that the African National Congress as a machine would actually allow you to be a reformer? Do you think that anyone who goes inside of the African National Congress can actually go inside of that party and reform that party because I tend to believe that even if you wanted to do things your way, but as soon as you get inside the African National Congress, then you get to understand how things work there. It's either you work how the African National Congress works or the NEC is going to deal with you. Do you think that Ramaphosa actually had a chance? <laughs> Of actually being a reformer in the country, do you think Ramaphosa actually had a chance of doing all of these things that he was talking about when he became the president? Or he came out thinking that the African National Congress is going to give him a leeway to actually govern better, to do things better. But now that he's the president of the ANC, the ANC is like, man, you need to understand one thing. Here we are corrupt. If you're going to come with that nonsense of yours, of Tumamina, of step aside, of cleaning things up, things are not going to work well for you. Things are not going to work well for you. I know that we are hard on Ramaphosa. Each and every day we are hard on Ramaphosa. Even right now, we are hard on Ramaphosa. But I'm just thinking that, guys, if you become the president of the ANC, do you think the ANC can actually allow you to be a reformer? Do you think the party can actually say, it is fine, man, just put corrupt thugs to jail. Just put corrupt ministers to jail. Just throw all of these people to jail, man. Just make sure that things are working in the country. Do you think the African National Congress can actually allow anyone to do that? a possibility because we're going to have meetings very soon within the next three four months where political parties like yourself will be sitting around the table saying we only need 10 10 uh, seats in parliament we only need seven seats in parliament we only need 15 seats in parliament and and those conversations will once will will get to a point where we say maybe we should call julius and you're saying that's that'll never happen it'll never happen Look, I'm not the leader of the party, but it'll certainly never happen under our current approach to things, no. Yeah. What's likely to happen post-elections, in your, in your take? With the, with the moonshot being part of, of the conversation. The most important thing is... And guys, do you think that the DA and the EFF not wanting anything to do with each other, do you think this is part of the problem that we are having in the country? Because as much as the political parties hate each other, as much as the DA and the EF, EFF hate each other so much, the biggest problem in the country is the African National Congress. <laughs> I wonder how would the DA and the EFF actually, their coalition would look like. <laughs> Can you imagine the coalition of the DA and the EFF? Man. <laughs> But I don't think it will ever happen, man. The political parties have insulted each other so much. These political parties, man, like they are personal. Whatever they are feeling towards each other is personal. Whatever the EFF feels about the DA is personal. And whatever the DA feels about the EFF is personal. And this is the reason why I think that these political parties, I don't think they're going to be able to work together. Not today, man, and not in the future. 
But hypothetically, I mean, can you imagine the DA and the EFF into coalition? <laughs> Justin Nason is the president of the country and Justin Nason is the president of the country and Julius Malema is the deputy president of the country, man. <laughs> is, in this election, I really think, is the provincial contests, they're going to be big, big. I think the moonshot has a path to power in Gauteng. Okay. I know that MK has been a game changer in KwaZulu-Natal. I'm coming to it. <laughs> but I think that um, we had a good shot with our other moonshot partner, the IFP. Mm -hmm. are, they still, are they still your partner? They're very much our partner. Okay. So they're a moonshot partner of ours. And we certainly had a clear path to victory there. Um, the big thing that we need to do in the DA is to aim to merge as the biggest party in various places, and certainly eventually nationally also, and then that'll be a complete game changer, and then we can really rescue South Africa. A recent um, research says uh, EFF will surpass your numbers. <laughs> Look, you know, I mean, we are many, many polls running around. This is a celebrated poll. I say celebrated because in the past, surely you've believed in it. Is it Ipsos? What is it called? The one poll that we don't believe in is mm. Ipsos. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think the EFF can actually surpass the, the Democratic Alliance? I don't think so, man. Do you think the EFF can actually surpass the DA? Ah, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm saying this because I've realized that <laughs> the DA supporters, man, these people, man, are silent voters. They don't speak a lot. The DA supporters are like the EFF supporters. When you know the EFF supporters, they speak a lot, but the DA supporters, the DA supporters, they don't speak a lot. So I, I I honestly don't think that the DA is going the EFF is going to surpass the DA. I think the EFF is going to grow again, maybe a bit. I'm just not sure if the DA is going to grow. I don't think the DA like the EFF. I think it might grow from maybe two three percentage, maybe from ten to thirteen somewhere like there. But I don't think the DA can actually go from like where it is twenty right now to like what thirty. Ah. Even, so, even when it, it speaks it speaks what you want to hear. No, it doesn't speak what we want to hear anyway. But it doesn't matter. We only want to hear the truth. That's the okay. point. You know, if, if the truth is negative, but it's the truth, we want to hear it. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm a person who tells the truth irrespective. I, that's what I get into trouble for. I tell it as it is. I tell the truth. I prove to be historically correct, even if I'm not politically correct in my own time. Mm. But I tell the truth because I really believe... You're building on quicksand if you don't tell the truth. That's true. So I believe in telling the truth, no matter how much trouble I get into. Yeah. But um, we believe our own polls because we've perfected them over many, many years. We've done turnout modeling that no one else has done. We allocate doubtfuls in a way that no one else knows how to do. So our polls are the most accurate polls. And uh, What, what are your polls saying? The our polls are saying that um, Jacob Zuma is a big player in KwaZulu-Natal and that he's shaken up things there and taken a lot of votes from the ANC and the EFF in particular. Mm -hmm. Which affects you indirectly. It does, indirectly. Obviously, everything affects everybody mm -hmm. indirectly or directly. And we're very satisfied with our progress. Mm -hmm. and, and nationally, what are your polls saying? Well, I'm not going to go into detail of what our polls say, because well, obviously that's, give me, give me, give me that's classified information. <laughs> but what it's saying is that the ANC is plummeting, mm. and they'll be very lucky to get 45% in this election. It's very little to, to run in the country. Well, it's, you know, mm. enough to make them very vulnerable. Yeah. So who do they run the country with? That's the big question. Can you Can you predict? Who knows? I mean, I think... 
if you look at the raw numbers, there's a possibility that they could run the country with the IFP, mm. which I think might be the first choice of Cyril and others. I think that's what you might see. Definitely not a EFF. Well, Paul Mashatile would want to go with the EFF. So it depends what the balance of forces are within the ANC, obviously. Mm. But, but uh, you know, we will be very strong in terms of holding out an alternative to the EFF. Yeah. The EFF believes in one leader controlling the party, the party controlling the state, the state controlling the economy and society. Disaster. Mm. The economy will crash out within a year. There'll be nothing. Disaster. Unemployment. When you think it's bad now, at 60%, wait till it's 95%. <laughs> Disaster. We, we can't go down that road. Yeah. I say wait till Julius hears this. <laughs> it's a story for another time. Because I remember at some point... Julius you... agrees with me. He agrees that he stands for leader controlling the party and the party controlling the state and the state controlling society. He agrees. Like, but, but basically that is just a leader controlling the society because if he controls the party and the party controls the state and the state controls the society, if he's on top of that food chain, everything goes through his command. That is dictatorship then. <laughs> that is dictatorship. agrees that that's his philosophy. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't agree on what the result will be. I'm telling him now what the result will be. Yeah. For free. Is that country that has had that similar similar approach to yes, things. Yes, Stalinism in Russia killed millions and millions of people. One can argue that uh, Russia is a relatively successful country. When were you last there? <laughs> well, not any time soon, recently. Tintuala wouldn't be able to live the life she does if she was a, a ordinary girl in Russia, believe me. Yeah. <laughs>